Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get into that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. I have to thank you for watching my videos and for subscribing and for the growth of my channel and for all the amazing things that are going on on my channel. The, the comments that you make about me, I just, I have to thank you. I can't do anything without thanking you first because I'm really thankful for everything that's going on. So thank you very much. I have a few news items today. The first one is an article that reads, The Three Harsh Consequences of California's New Minimum Wage Law Become Painfully Clear. It's Leaving No Stones Unturned. If you read the article, what it talks about is that because California has raised their minimum wage to $20, restaurants, fast food restaurants like Pizza Hut are laying off their drivers, their delivery drivers. And they're, they're forcing their customers now to use DoorDash, Grubhub, and Uber Eats instead, which means that the customers will be paying more for the same product because the added uh, cost associated with those delivery apps. So that's the first thing that's happened. The second thing is increased prices. On average, they've raised the prices of their products by about 8%. And that's to cover the additional cost of labor. Because, duh, <laughs> what would you expect to happen when you force a company to pay their employees more? Do you, think, do you really think that in 2023, companies are not paying their employees what they can afford to pay them? I mean, think about it for just a minute. With all the competition that goes on, Burger King, Jack in the Box, Denny's, El Pollo Loco, McDonald's, uh, name them. I mean, there's so many of them, and they're all in competition with each other for the same labor pools. So they're going to pay the best rates they can afford to pay. And when the government forces them to pay more, this is what happens. You get layoffs, you get increased prices, and the third thing you get is automation. All of the chains now are looking at ways to reduce their costs by introducing more and more technology in their restaurants. You've probably seen this in some places. For example, at the McDonald's that we have here, they now have self-service kiosks inside the restaurant. So you no longer have to have someone at the counter. You just order on the self-service kiosk and another way they do it is through phone apps. I mean, a lot of the food that we buy nowadays, restaurant food, we buy through the app and then we just go pick it up. So <clears throat> they're, they're looking at robot fryers. They're looking at automated ways to make some of the products that they have so they don't even have to have cooks. And, and that's just going to continue because <clears throat> they, they just cannot afford to pay $20 an hour. That's just reality. But of course, politicians, well, you know, I was going to say they don't understand it, but I think they really do. They're just pandering to people. They're pandering to the people that are making a small amount of money, trying to convince them that they can make more. But in the end, what they end up doing is putting more and more of them out of work. That's just the way it works. I mean, it's economics 101, right? So... California is kind of like the test case for what happens when you go bonkers with your, uh, your, uh, the wage level that you demand companies to pay. The second article I have, and again, I always put these links in the description, and it's up to you. If you want to read them, you can, and you don't have to read them, but I make them available to you because I think these are things that you likely are not going to hear about on the uh, mainstream media, the news, the you know, like the New York Times, the Washington Post, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, all Fox News, all of that. None of them are going to be reporting a lot of this stuff. The second article that I have is Vietnam calls for protection of civilians in armed conflicts. Now, they reference both the, uh, the war in Ukraine and the uh, war in the Mideast in, again, in Gaza and Israel. But when I saw this uh, article, I immediately thought, how hypocritical can you possibly be? 
the, the Communist Party in Vietnam committed massive atrocities. I have a video about one of them that you probably never even heard of. It's called the Way Massacre, where they killed over 5,000 people, murdered them. They, they, they tied 10 people together with a rope, and then they would get another 10 to dig a trench for the bodies to go into. And then they would shoot the person on the end of the line in the head. And once that person fell, because the others were tied to him, they would all fall as well. And then they would just bury them alive. That's what they did. I, I have, you know, I have a video about it. I've written articles about it. It's the most unknown massacre in the history of the Vietnam War. And it was committed by the communists who committed much, much more worse, more brutal massacres than anything that America ever did. And don't get me wrong, the massacre at My Lai was a horrible, horrible war crime. And the people that committed it should have gone to jail. They didn't, but they should have. And I don't know any veteran of the Vietnam War who isn't disgusted by what those soldiers did in My Lai. But what they did in My Lai, it pales in comparison to what the communists did on a routine basis. And now they're, they're calling for the protection of civilians in armed conflicts. Well, yeah, that's called talking out of both sides of your mouth. Now, the next article I have is the Border Patrol Union says Biden is flying in immigrants so the border doesn't look as out of control. And so this one I, I had to show you. I've highlighted some of the information in it because it, it's so, whoops, wrong article. Uh, it's so stunning to me. It is so stunning to me that I just have to highlight this to you. According to a Center for Immigration Studies Freedom of Information lawsuit, the Biden administration used Customs and Border Protection's cell phone app, CBP-1, to secretly fly in 320,000 inadmissible illegal immigrants in 2023. What? Let me read that again. According to a Center for Immigration Studies Freedom of Information lawsuit, the Biden administration used Customs and Border Protection's cell phone app, CBP-1, to secretly fly in 320,000 inadmissible illegal immigrants in 2023. Now, understand what they're saying when they say fly in. They're flying them from foreign countries not from the border. They're actually flying over the border. So you won't see them coming into the country. The nonprofit, referring to the Center for Immigration Studies, Think Tank's senior national security fellow, Todd Benzman, reported that the White House transported the migrants pre-approved through CBP-1 to 43 airports in the U.S. from January through December of 2023. The migrants were citizens of Cuba, Haiti, Venezuela, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Colombia, and Ecuador. In January 2023, the Biden administration expanded the CBP-1 application to encourage migrants to apply for entry while in their home country in a safe and orderly manner, quote unquote. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas claimed the mobile app would discourage and ultimately reduce illegal immigration at the southern border. Sure, why not? I mean, why do you have to cross the border when the country will pay to fly you? I mean, think about this for a minute. Let's say, for example, you live in Colombia. You've got quite a ways to go to get to America on foot, and you have to go through the Darien Gap, which is horrendous. It, it, lots of people die trying to get through the Darien Gap in Panama. You have to go through all that. You have to pay coyotes thousands and thousands of dollars and hope that they don't rape your wife and your daughters 
and hope that they don't kill you along the way. And finally, after all that, you know, painful, tremendous struggle to get to the border, you have to sneak in. Well, why do that when you can just board an airplane paid for by the United States and fly into the country? <sighs> there is no way having this knowledge now that you can possibly say that the increase in immigrants coming into our country is not deliberate on the part of the Biden administration. It's just so obvious. I mean, if they're flying people from their home countries into the country, what do you think their plan is? It isn't to stop the illegal immigration, that's for sure. Now, the next thing is cancer deaths in the U.S. in 2021 and 2022 in large excess over trend for 15 to 44-year-olds as extreme events. This is a Twitter post uh, that a, a fellow put up. Who's, he's a, a doctor and a researcher, and they're studying it. And, and they've discovered that there is a uh, what they call an excess in deaths. In other words, they demographers basically know what the expected numbers are for people dying between the age of 15 and 44. They've, they've mapped this out. They've done it, you know, statistically for years and years and years, decades even. So they know what the normal number of deaths is in that age range. Well, the number that have died in 2021 and 2022 is in great excess of what they expect to see in cancer deaths. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, what do you suppose caused that? The link will be there. You can read that one too. And then finally, this one, uh, which for me was a little bit of schadenfreude. Um, John Stewart recently uh, did a series of Twitter posts and did a show where he uh, harshly criticized Donald Trump for his conviction on real estate fraud in New York and said that by overvaluing his properties, he was cheating the taxpayers and it was not a victimless crime. So, of course, those who don't like John Stewart started doing some research on him, and guess what they found out? He overvalued his New York City home by 829% and sold it for that price. But that wasn't what he paid taxes on. He, valued, he sold the home at $17.1 million, and the buyer then resold it at a loss of over $3 million. That's kind of a strange deal, don't you think? It looks like there's some shenanigans going on there. But anyway, uh, when he paid taxes on he paid taxes on it as if it was worth 829000 So he's getting roasted in tw on Twitter for his hypocrisy, and I think he richly deserves it. So, oops. So, that's the news for the day. And as always, I want you to know that I pray for you. I pray every day that you will have an abundant life, that you'll live a long time and that you'll be healthy and that God will keep you safe from harm. And I also pray that you, he will do the same for every person that you love. And I pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will let your request be made known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out. <laughs>